In this video, I will build the 25 plus 5 clock app, also known as the Pomodoro clock, using a different approach. Okay. Now, when I say a different approach, I am comparing it to the approach that I used in my other video, the first video in this playlist, where I build the same app, 25 plus 5 clock, using a particular approach and by the way here is the video on youtube if you go to youtube and if you search with the string free or keywords free code camp 25 plus 5 clock solution one uh, one of the search results should be the video my video on my coding channel code lander okay now in this video as in case you've seen it as you know i build the entire app from scratch so basically i create the html from scratch i create the css from scratch and I also write the JavaScript jQuery code from scratch, right? And obviously that app works and we passed all the tests as you will notice uh, from that video if you haven't watched it. Now in this video that you're currently watching, I'm gonna be using a different method. So what is that different method? So in the previous video, right? This video, I my implementation is based on or hinges on the JavaScript set interval method, okay? In this video, that I'm that you're watching right now, my implementation will be based on or will hinge on the JavaScript set timeout method. So that is the key difference between that implementation, right, on this video and the implementation that we are going to attempt, that we are going to accomplish, hopefully, in this video that you're watching right now. All right. So a quick note on that. Uh, if you haven't watched already, please go ahead and watch that first video that I put on the 25 plus 5 clock solution one. Right, uh, because again, as I said, right in that video, I build the HTML, the CSS, and JavaScript jQuery code from scratch, so it'll really help you connect. Now, I'm going to be reusing uh, all uh, most of the code right here uh, in this video. So I'm going to be using the HTML as is. I'm going to be reusing the CSS as is, and I'm also going to be reusing uh, most of the JavaScript jQuery code that I wrote last time around in that video. All right, so that is why it'll help you follow along better and faster uh, without any confusion if you uh, you know watch that first video and once again that video is on YouTube you can search for it using this string okay so let's get to talking about what we want to do in this video so as I said I'm going to be implementing this app here using a different method and I will do it in four steps so let me quickly outline what those steps are so the first step number one or the first step is I'm going to basically start updating the JavaScript file Okay, I'm going to jump right into the JavaScript file, JavaScript um, jQuery code, and we're going to start updating the code for the new approach. Okay, and when I do this, while I do this, I'm also going to take some time to explain, you know, the set timeout method. Okay, uh, once I do that, step number two, we will do some cleanup, some refactoring that I could not get to in the last video. So I'm going to do some refactoring of the code. Uh, then we will run the automated test uh, for the code that we uh, complete uh, so that we can make sure that our code is uh, up to snuff, is up to par, and passes all the requirements, okay? And we we are going to run the automated test in the workspace uh, for free code camp, just like I did in the previous video. And finally, I'll give you a walkthrough of my GitHub repository repo where I have stored the artifacts that I will you know that are related to this video okay so that's the plan guys so with that let's jump right in so this is our so this is my code editor um, this is you know VS code as you know this is what I use and this is the index.html file this is the HTML code that we wrote for this app in that last video I'm gonna reuse it once again uh, so no changes needed here this is the CSS um, thing we wrote, the CSS uh, instructions we wrote uh, last time around in that video, right? Obviously, I'm going to reuse it as is, so no change needed here. And this is the, the jQuery, the JavaScript jQuery code that we, again, wrote in the last video. And here is where I'll make some, some changes in order to change, uh, in order to accommodate the new approach. All right. So what is the new approach that I'm talking about? So as I said, right, I'm going to be using the set timeout method here. 
in the previous approach, like in this code, and by the way, this code works perfectly. Uh, again, this was developed in the last video and we passed the tests. So you know this code works perfectly, right? Uh, but let me draw your attention to where we use the set interval method. So if you come down here, right, in our start underscore stop click function, area here is where we are using the set interval method right and as i said we are going to be using the set timeout so let's take a quick debrief of what set timeout is so basically set timeout is a javascript method inbuilt method as part of the javascript library which what it does it it calls a function at a certain duration after a certain duration is elapsed so in other words a set timeout a method expects or requires at least two arguments. The first argument is a function, okay? And the second argument is some time duration in milliseconds, okay? So for example, this set timeout method, which I just wrote down right now, what this set timeout will do is it'll call this function called some func after 3000 milliseconds or after three mil three seconds because 3000 milliseconds is three seconds right that's what this set time or this line of code will do it will call this function called some function after three seconds if you want to call it after six seconds you just do 6000 right in this case this function sub uh, some func will be called by set timeout after six seconds right so you can change the duration anytime but the basic idea is that set timeout calls a past function after a given duration of time that you have specified obviously as you can see this function is called just once this function is called just once not again and again like you do in set interval right and another thing that you have to also understand is obviously you have to define this sum function right I mean, this is this is common sense. If you don't define some func, right, before you call it via set timeout, you're going to get an error, right? So obviously you have to define this function before you pass it to the set timeout. But if you do that, then set timeout will work exactly as it's supposed to, meaning it will call the function some func after whatever duration of time that you've specified here. So that's what a set timeout does. So with that knowledge, let's go back into a code and let's replace our set interval with set timeout uh, one more thing i want to mention right a set timeout method also is a good way the appropriate way to call it is basically to use an integer uh, variable a number variable right uh, so whatever let's call it id uh, why because as i said in the previous video just like the set interval method whenever you invoke set timeout it returns an id which is a positive integer. So you need a variable to store that ID to catch that value. So later, when you want to kill the set timeout method, when you want to end it, or when you, when you want to close or kill the set timeout method, you can use the another JavaScript inbuilt function or method called clear interval, clear timeout, excuse me, and pass to it this ID. This is how you will kill any existing set timeout uh, a run or set timeout timer, right? So this is another important thing that you have to keep in mind, which is that you should call set timeout in this manner, meaning you must call it using uh, using a variable, right? A number variable, because set timeout will return an ID, which is a positive integer. And how do you use that ID? Well, you will need that ID later when you want to kill this set timeout invocation by using another JavaScript method called clear timeout to which you will pass that ID. All right. So with that in mind, let's go back to our code and let's replace our set interval with set timeout. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to replace the set interval with set timeout okay that's all the change i made and i now my set int id is already ready you know we declared it up top here right we declared set int id uh, right here and it is declared as a number variable so we are we are good to go and you know in fact let me do this uh, let me close this terminal for now because i will use it uh, later so i'm just going to close it now so you have more space more real estate to view the code so back to our um line of code where we made a simple change we are basically now invoking the set timeout instead of the set interval okay and now let's see what our app does okay so we go to our app here is the app 
I'm going to refresh it. All right. Now I'm going to change to some value, let's say 18. I'm going to change the break to some value, let's say 2. And I'm going to start the timer. And look, look what happened here, right? I started the timer at 18 colon 00, basically at 18 minutes. It counted down exactly one second and stopped. Right? It did not continue the countdown. But it did count down the first second accurately, right? It went from 18 colon 00 to 17 colon 59. So that first second countdown was accurate, but it just stopped. It didn't continue the countdown. Well, why did that happen? So we should easily be able to guess the reason. Now that we know how a set timeout operates, we should know that, well, set timeout did its job. It called the function update timer just once after one second. Right? It called it just once. And that's exactly what a set timeout is supposed to do. It called this function update timer, which, which is doing the actual reduction in the seconds count, right? It called this function update timer just once. And that's what happened. That's why we see here basically this countdown go down from uh, 18 colon 00 to 1759. So let's do it again, right? I'm going to set it to the same value. You can set it to any value, by the way. I'm just doing it for the sake of continuity. I click start and you get 17 colon 59, right? So we know why this happened, right? So in other words, we we know we have to we have to find a way to call update timer repeatedly, right? That's what set interval did. And that's why when we were using set interval, the countdown was working just fine. It kept on counting down till it reached zero or till till it till we manually stopped it. So here, even though we are using set timeout, which is calling the update timer once, and obviously that's that's not going to work. So we need a way to keep calling update timer again and again, repeatedly after one second, after after one second, right? And we need to do that using set timeout, right? Because we are no longer using set interval, using set timeout in our different approach. So how do we use set timeout to keep calling update timer? Once again, the definition of the way set timeout works it works is that it just calls the past function once after whatever elapsed, whatever duration you specify. All right. So we need to find a way to use set timeout to keep calling update timer repeatedly. How do we do that? Well, the answer is we will need to call set timeout recursively. All right. This, for those of you who have done some coding, you are familiar with this word, familiar with this, uh, this word. It's quite common. It basically means calling the same function again and again. So we will need to use call set timeout recursively in order to basically call update timer repeatedly. Now, how do we do that? Let me try to explain that using an example. Okay. So I'm going to clear this code here. Okay, so now I have a empty JavaScript uh, f uh, file. Okay, this is an empty JavaScript file, test.js. I'm going to demonstrate an example that shows to you how do we call the, um, you know, set timeout and how do we use set timeout to keep calling update timer repeatedly. All right, so I'm going to write a simple function. Okay, I'm going to uh, declare a simple function. I'm going to call it do something. Okay, and I'm going to uh declare it here you know what let me use arrow function to declare this okay i i want i'm used to arrow function and uh hopefully you guys are aware of it um you know so if not please uh, google it um it, that's a different way to declare function it's a little more efficient and cleaner way and the way you do that you simply use this word uh the keyword const you write the name of the function which is do something you put an equal to sign after that. The parenthesis remains as it is, and then here you put a greater than here you put an equal to and a greater and a and a, a, a arrow sign here, greater than arrow sign here, or greater than equal to sign here, and you then start the curly braces, opening and closing curly braces, and you basically put your code here. So I have basically declared using arrow notation. I have basically declared a function called do something. All right. And in that function, what I want to do is do something very simple. I just want to print to the console. Okay. I just want to print to the console a, a, a sentence, a simple sentence called I love coding. Okay. That's what I want this function this function called do something to do. I basically want to print to the console this sentence, I love coding. So let me first open up the console here, okay? And you should see the console below, and there it is. Now, I want to call this function. So in order to call the function, I have to actually call it, right? So I'm gonna call it here, do something, okay? 
and I'm going to run the code. Now, when I run the code, what should I see? Well, when I run the code, I should simply see this sentence printed in the console here. Right? That's all I should see. It's a simple function with a single line of code, which is about a console.log. Okay, so I'm going to run the code and you should see. And there you go. Well, not yet. Sorry. Uh, here you go. There you go. You see the statement I love coding. Right now it's cramped between you know these two lines. So let me make some space. Right. I'm going to add a new line character above this and I'm going to add a new line character below this. OK, this what this will do is it will print the same sentence in the console, but it will print it with an empty line above and below. So there will be better visibility. So let me run the code again. And now you should see, as you can see now, it printed the sentence I love coding, but you have an empty line up top and you have an empty line at bottom. So it improves visibility. Right. So again, all we did here was write a simple function. That function just does one thing, which is print something to the console, print the the, the sentence I love coding to the console. So we're good. Now let's try to invoke this function using set timeout. So I'm going to I'm going to do this. I'm going to comment this out and let me use set timeout to execute the same function. How do we do it? Will you write set timeout? Okay. We give the name of the function. Okay. And let's say I want to call this function after three seconds. All right, that's just an arbitrary time. You can use anything but any time duration. But for this example, I'm just going to use three three seconds. So now I'm using set timeout to basically call this function. So what should we expect to see here? All right, let me first clear the terminal here. Okay, what should we expect to see? Well, we should expect to see the same sentence i love coding but you should see it after three seconds have elapsed meaning once i run the code we need to wait three seconds and then we should see this sentence i love coding printed in the console so let's do it okay and i'm going to do a mock sort of countdown just to uh, um, sort of uh, punctuate that three seconds are actually passing okay so here we go one two three and there you go three seconds later our do something function was called and it printed that line i love coding to the to the console so this is how set timeout works it basically calls the function after whatever duration of time you mentioned okay now what if i wanted to call or wanted to print i love coding on the console repeatedly right how would we do that right in this case we called set timeout once and so it did uh, set timeout did its job it called the function and this function basically printed the line once right but what if i want to print the line i love coding you know recurringly like again and again right and i want to do it every three seconds that's my goal how would i do that well i would make need to make a simple change i would need to go inside the function and i would need i could call i would need to call set timeout once again and pass it the same function as one of its argument do something and let's say i choose the same three second um, interval so i'll say 3000 now what should we expect to see well now what we should expect to see is that once i run the code you will need to wait three seconds then you will see the first i love coding sentence printed on the console then you'll need to wait another three seconds and then once again the sentence i love coding will be printed to the console and then you wait another three seconds and once again you'll see the sentence i love coding printed to the console and this will go on ad infinitum this will go on and on and on and on right so let's do that in fact let me get to this line of code i don't need it here inner so i'm going to start running the code here there you go one two three one two three one two three one two three okay and i did that mock countdown in uh, intentionally just to punctuate or highlight that you know three seconds are actually elapsing uh before each um, sentence is getting printed to the console and that's exactly what we needed to happen so now look what we accomplished we used set timeout to basically call this function recurringly right and this as i said will keep on going until we kill the process this will keep on going now obviously i could have written some code here to clear the interval but i don't want to complicate this example i wanted to use a you know as short an example as possible to basically demonstrate to use demonstrate to you how to use set timeout to keep calling a function recurringly repeatedly and this is known as recursive set timeout okay this is generally referred to as calling set timeout recursively 
all right so let me do this let me uh kill this uh running program uh, so i'm gonna you know, use this command here. I'm going to stop it. All right. So it's, as you can see, the program execution is stopped. Now, obviously, one thing that I should do better here is I should declare a uh, declare a variable. I should, you know, call, you know, declare use a variable to call this function. So I can say say id one equals this, and I could do something like let id two equals this. Remember, each call of set timeout must have its own id. You cannot use the same variable to store or to invoke. Uh, successive set timeouts because if you do that then then the the only the final calls id will be registered will be stored all of the previous ids will be overwritten right so you don't want to do that so each time you invoke a set timeout it is it is better that you use a distinct variable to invoke that particular instance of set timeout all right so again this is just uh, uh, semantics uh, but this is the right way so armed with this knowledge right armed with this the knowledge that we gained from this short example now we know what is uh, recursive you know, calling set timeout recursively so with that let's go in here all right i'm going to go in here and i'm going to close the console because you don't need it anymore uh, i'm going to basically now call set timeout recursively so here we call set timeout once as you know in order to call set timeout recursively, you have to go inside the function you're calling and once again call set timeout, right? So we are calling update timer. We go right to the bottom. Okay. Let me make sure we're right at the bottom. All right. And here I'm going to invoke update uh, set timeout once again. All right. Set time out. Okay. Update timer. And we need to call it after one second. So I'm going to now I just wrote the code to call set to call update timer or to call set timeout recursively and obviously I need a variable here to call it appropriately. So let me do this. Let me declare a variable. Uh, let me call it set uh, int id uh, 2. Okay, let me do this and let me change the first variable here to i to 1. Okay, so we have now two distinct variables. This is set int id 1 and this is set in id2 now obviously as you know from the previous video we are declaring all our variables in the variable section at the top of this file so let's do that let's not declare variables you know one of the things one of the uh, guidelines that i stated at the beginning of my first video is that we are going to declare all our variables globally and we are going to declare them in the same space right up top so that we have can manage it easily, right? So that's why I'm taking off the let statement here. All I have to do is basically declare these two new variables set in ID one and set in ID two, rather set in underscore ID one and set in underscore ID two up top here. So I'm gonna to go to my variable section. I'm going to first modify uh, our set in ID. So set in ID is no longer ID. We used to use that in the previous implementation. Now we have two variables set in underscore ID one and set in underscore ID two. So I'm going to modify this and the rest can remain. And I'm going to declare set in ID ID two. And I'm going to initialize it to zero because I know it's going to be a number variable. All right. So I have declared these two variables. I have made uh, sure that uh, we don't get any, uh, you, know, you know, simple sort of errors due to some silly mistakes. So now I have, I have basically written all the code I need to write in order to call set set timeout. All right. <clears throat> so let's see how it works. All right. When we come here, I'm going to refresh this. I'm going to set it to I don't know some one number 19 and let me start the timer and voila look at it it is working right before when we had just one in when we had called set timeout once it just basically did a countdown for one second and stopped but now look here it is going the countdown timer is working all right so as you can see with just two simple lines of code you have a different method to implement the uh, the update timer we are using set timeout recursively and we are getting the same timeout uh, count excuse me countdown timer functionality now obviously there's more work we need to do uh, so what is that work so let me refresh this page let's take a look at what is what other changes we need to make right so here remember we just change it to set timeout right so we have to obviously Whenever we click the button, we have to make sure we are able to stop the uh, the countdown. In other words, we have to stop the existing set timeouts, right? Just as we did in the previous implementation, right? Previously, we had set interval here. So 
down here we had to use clear interval right now we no longer have set interval we have set timeout so down here right and this is the section when i say down here i'm talking about this section i'm talking about this else code block in this else code block we are supposed to stop the timer and how did we stop the timer well in the previous implementation we used clear interval and passed to it the id of the clearant of the set interval right but now we are no longer using set interval we are using set timeout right so we have to do use clear timeout to basically kill the timer or stop the timer right because this again this line of code this else if code block that is what it is supposed to do right is to stop the timer right and again if you want to refresh why that is the case please go watch the relevant section of the previous video so you will understand the logic right because i already explained it in great detail over there so let me get rid of this sentence right because we are no longer using clear interval we need to use clear timeout okay, and pass to it uh, the id which is set int Now, is it the only clear timeout that we should put? Well, think about it, right? We are calling set timeout twice, each with its own unique ID. So clearly we have to also kill both the timers, right? So we have to use clear timeout twice as well. Okay. Set int ID two. Okay, so hope you realize why we need to do that again reason is simple we are invoking set timeout twice once here and once here so obviously when we stop the timer we have to stop both the timers we have to kill both the timers and that is why we are uh, calling clear timeout twice each with its own id set int id underscore set int underscore id one and set int underscore id two all right so we are good here now are there any other changes we need to make uh yeah how about the reset button remember in the reset button when we click the reset button one of the things we do is we basically call clear interval and we pass to it the id that we had used to invoke the set interval well once again we are no longer using set interval we're using set timeout and we are using set timeout recursively so we have two calls of set timeout so here we will need to replace this right let me delete this with basically the same code we wrote here i'll just copy this here and paste it here right again when you hit the reset button you should be able to one of the requirements of the reset button is that it should stop the um the, the timer any running timer should be stopped well in order to do that since we are using set timeout recursively we have to clear any running set timeouts and that is why we are using clear timeout here twice to basically stop any running set timeouts all right so this uh is the other change that we need to, needed to make right so now i think the code will work but let's do one more thing before we actually uh do our final test right so if, if i in other words if i go in here if i do another very very super quick test if i just start the timer right obviously it'll run now if i use uh the stop button i'm going to click this button again to stop it right look the timer is stopped if i want to start it again i click it again and it goes it keeps going again just as it is supposed to now if i want to uh, reset the button and you know and and it should demonstrate all the behavior associated with the reset button let me try that i hit reset and look this went to five this went to 25 these these were already five and 25 so maybe i should have adjusted that so let me do it now let me basically uh, just change this to better demonstrate that our reset button is working i'm going to make it uh, i don't know 18 i'm going to start the timer all right the timer runs it runs perfectly well uh, let me try to pause the timer by clicking this button again i clicked it again and look the timer is at a pause great i'm going to now restart the timer by clicking this button again and let's see the timer restart yep it restarts just fine and i'm going to let's say reset this click the reset and everything should go back to its default state so look it went back to 5 went back to 25 and this went back to 25 colon 0, 0. so all our functionality is working just fine now i'll do one more short final test with like very small intervals to show that the beeps and the transitions and all those stuff is working but before that let's do some refactoring so basically now we are moving on to step number two here right uh, there is some obvious areas that i couldn't get to in my last video because the last video was like four and a half hours long and i didn't want to take another half an hour to clean up or another 15 minutes right so i i'm i would like to do that cleanup here so 
what is that cleanup I want to do? So if you look at update timer, all the cleanup I want to do is basically pertains to the code we wrote in, in the function update timer. So here is the update timer function. Okay. Now, if you notice here, what's going on, you notice that there is a lot of code repetition. So look at this, look at the lines of code are highlighted. Well, this, all this code that are highlighted gets repeated here as well, right? It's the exact same code we get repeated here, right? Also, if you look here, certain certain lines of code, like for example, this, this, and this, they all get repeated. These four lines of code get repeated down here as well, right? Here, 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 and here. So we have a lot of code repetition, right? And as you know, one of the guiding principles in coding is D R Y, don't repeat yourself. So that is why this is a plum a prime opportunity to do some cleanup to do some refactoring so let's do that right now if you notice here right the logic that we currently have coded here that we did in the last video is that whenever update timer is called we say hey first thing you do is check what is the value of is break if is break is false then execute all this line of code okay but if is break is true then execute all this line of code that's the general logic of update timer, right? That's the general logic. But if you notice here, within each uh, if code block, right, there is this rep code that is repeated, right? We don't need that. We can, so this code will, will be executed no matter what the value of is break is, right? Hope you understand wh why this code, what this code repetition means. This code repetition means that regardless of whether is break is false or if is break is true, Look here, this line of code will get executed no matter what. So I'm highlighting this both now, right? This line of code will get executed no matter what the value of is break is. So we don't need to put this, these lines of code twice. We can do it once. In other words, when we enter the update timer function, we don't have to check whether is break is true or false. We can check it at a later point in time within the same function, but we simply execute these lines of code because they will get executed regardless of the value of the variable is break, all right? So in other words, we will remove the is break at the, at the very top. So let me first do this. Let me, let me first copy this here, copy this whole thing. Okay, and I am, uh, um, going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this here and I'm going to just basically write it uh, outside the is break. All right. I'm going to write it outside the is break somewhere here and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to close this out like so. Okay. So now what we have done is we have basically taken out these lines of code and we've run it here. So now we don't need it here. So I can get rid of this here. But before we do that, try to understand what is uh, what is going on here, right? What is going on here is that we have this condition, the third condition, which is uh, what I want you to understand is look at this third condition where we are checking the value, whether the value of the variables dispval min and dispval sec are both zero, right? So this condition obviously is a valid condition, right? But in this condition, there are certain lines of code that are the same and certain lines of code that are different. So for example, if you, if you take a look at the this if block, right? Well, this line of code, and if you compare this code block, right? With this code block, you will notice that certain lines of code are same, whereas certain lines of code are different. Well, which lines of code are the same and are getting repeated? Well, this four lines of code are getting repeated. They show up here. And they also show up here. If you, you know, let me just move this down here so you can see it better, right? Okay. So now, if you look here, this, these four lines of code are exactly the same. What you have here is also what you have here. So clearly, we don't need to repeat ourselves. So what we can do instead is that once we come into this if condition, here we can check whether what is the value of is break because if is break is false then we have to do these two lines of code th these two lines of code and and this one all right so let me move it here so i can point it out easily right when is break is false meaning section is being counted down we need to execute these lines of code right these lines of code will get executed regardless of the value of is break and similarly in this if in this code block when is value is break is true right we execute these lines of code 
which are unique to this block, right? So basically these ones, all right? The next four lines of code get executed no matter what the value is break is. So what I'm saying is we will check now that we're altering the logic a little bit, we will check the value is break, not up top, as soon as we enter the update timer function, right? Originally, what we did was, as soon as we entered update timer, first thing we did was we used to check the value is break and then decide on the next code execution. What I'm saying now, the change that I'm making now as part of refactoring, the change that I'm suggesting now as part of refactoring is that we will check that we all, we need, all we need to do is check the value is break, inside this code block okay once we come into this code block we check what is the value of is break if is break is true then we execute this line of code if is break is false then we execute the other line of code obviously these four lines of code will remain constant right so let's do that now all right so first off i want to make sure you you are you know you you follow this uh, you're hopefully you're able to follow the logic that I'm demonstrating here. Okay, so let me make the changes now. And first we need to get rid of this is break because as I said, right, we're not gonna check for is break as soon as we enter the function update timer. We used to do that in the previous implementation. Now we're not gonna do that, right? So first, let me make sure I don't make any mistakes. I get rid of the is break here, okay? And also we are, you know, we need to get rid of all this stuff here, right? So I'm gonna get rid of this stuff here because we already copied it up top, okay? I'm going to get rid of this here. Uh, this is here. Uh, and uh, okay, I'm gonna get to this here. I'm gonna get to this here. We don't need this. We don't need to check this. I'm gonna leave this here because we need to check for the third condition. Okay. Uh, and what else? And we don't need, we don't have the if, so we don't need else if. Right, and I'm going to, what we need to do is basically, uh, we, we don't need this stuff because we are already, like I said, we are going to execute these lines of code regardless of the value of is break. And that's why we copied it right up top here, right? Remember, right up top, we copied these lines of code so we can get rid of the code here. Uh, let me make sure that I don't make any mistakes. Uh, yes, I'll get rid of the code here. I'll get rid of this as well, okay? And I'll, so we, and obviously we don't need this whole section, right? We are not checking the value is break anymore up top, right? So we can basically get rid of this whole section here. Okay, there you go. Now look how much cleaner our code is looking already, how much cleaner our update timer function is looking already, right? So now this is what our update timer function looks like, right? We come in here, we execute these lines of code, which needs to get executed regardless, right? Then we enter uh, the this condition. Right, so let me, we need to make this an if else, right? So I'm, these comments are no longer valid, so I have to get rid of it. I'm, this becomes not an if statement, but this becomes an if else, else, else if statement, all right? So else if, all right? And what we're saying is that when you come into this uh, condition, this scenario where both the minutes and the seconds value are zero, here is where you need to check for the, condition of is break, right? So how do we do that? Let's do come in here and here you check if is break equals false, meaning the session length is being counted down. Then what do you do? Then you have to include this block of code inside the first if inside. Basically you have to run all this code, right? If is break is false, right? And let's walk through this, right? When is break is false, it means the session is being counted down. That means when the value of the minutes and seconds is zero, and if is break is false, you are at the end of your session countdown. So what do you do? You have to flip the switch. You have to flip the Boolean variable, make it true, right? That means you have to start counting down. You're telling programmatically that, hey, start counting down the break. You also have to set your minutes counter to the break length which is stored in the variable break CTR, right? Then you have to change that heading. Remember this heading we talked about? This heading should change from session to break. So that's what you're doing here, right? In this line of code. And then the rest of the code is, is basically, you know, you're setting the seconds count to zero, which is obvious why. And then you're playing the beep with these two lines of code. And then you're calling the update display function to basically display the updated time, right? So that's what you do when is break is false. Well, what if is break is the other flip side of is break also has to be accounted for, which is 
else if is break equals true well, what do we do now well now what we do is we have to set is break to false right we have to set this val min to session ctr right because remember if is break is true right you are in, you are checking for this once the value of minutes and seconds are already zero so when the value of minutes and seconds is zero and the value of is break is true what does that mean that means the break countdown the break length has just been counted down all the way to zero that means the break length is countdown is over so you have to start the sessions countdown so what what do you do to start the session countdown well the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure that is break programmatically indicates that hey break is over start the session that is why we set is break to false also we're going to count the session so we have to initialize or we have to store in the minutes count in the minutes count variable min. we have to store the session length which is stored in the variable session ctr we do that all right now we also have to set the seconds count this val sec to zero okay but look this is already getting repeated now like i said right once you have set is break value and 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 the uh, and the minutes counter and the minutes count value to the appropriate value right you the other unique thing you have to do is basically you have to set the display this display to to read session right you have to this should no longer read break you should read session once remember when the break countdown is over this will show break this will not show session so when you're starting the session countdown you have to change you have to change this to show break so you have to use that uh, basically i'm going to copy this code here it's the same code here right but with one minor change which is you have to pass it the string or the text session okay now from here on everything else is the same so from here on it is the same four lines of code we have to set the minutes count to zero we have to play the beep and we have to update call update display so we don't need to call it again what we can do is we can call it we can call it outside the two if if conditions right because that's common code that will run regardless so i'm going to basically copy this here and i'm going to basically paste it here and i'm going to get rid of this here because that's repeated code and i'm also also going to delete it from here okay so again in terms of logic what did we do we are and let me, let me just delete this uh, space what we did here is that what's going on in update timer so let me do a quick review let me get rid of uh, let me just get rid of the space here all right what's going on in update timer so what's going on in update timer is this right update timer when it gets called the first thing it does it, it just executes this lines of code based on the value of the minutes and second so if minutes is greater than or equal to one and seconds is zero it executes these three lines of code else if minutes is greater than or equal to zero and if the seconds count is not equal to zero it executes these two lines of code okay or if the minutes and seconds count are both zero then it comes in and first thing it does is checks the value of is break if is break is false that means the session countdown has just completed so now we have to make the programmatic changes to indicate to the program that hey go start the break countdown so that's what we do with these three lines of code okay or if is break is true that means the break countdown has just been completed and we need to start the session countdown so basically we, we then we have to write the code to indicate that hey go ahead and start the session countdown and what is that code we change the value is break to false and we set or initialize the minutes count to session ctr which contains the session length right and we print the word session right and the rest of the code remains exactly the same right the rest of the code remains exactly the same so we don't need to put it inside any of the is break checking if conditions we can just put it outside all right so this is the refactoring that i was referring to that i couldn't get to in the previous video now if you look at it right how much cleaner does our code look we had you know almost more than double the lines of code here now look our update timer starts and finishes here basically and let me do a quick check here to make sure it's work it uh, there are no errors so i think there aren't any errors let me just open up the console uh, just to make sure there aren't any errors so i'm going to open the console here uh, it's taking a while to open up All right i don't know what happened here let's see 
Okay, there you, there you go. I'm going to refresh the page and just to see, just to make sure they, we're not getting any errors and we're not, right? So, so knock on wood, whatever refactoring changes we made did not, we did it correctly because there are, otherwise you would see some error if you were making some error like missing a parenthesis, missing a semicolon or some kind of a duplication. We would have seen some kind of a warning or an error here. We are seeing none of that. So we made the changes. Uh, correctly fingers crossed right now let's run the code so this is the code changes we made now i'm going to basically do a quick test here to see if, if how it works okay so i'm going to refresh the page just to be sure it's taking in the new code i'm going to reduce it to a smaller value so i'm going to uh, make session length as two minutes and i'm going to make break length break length as one minute and i'm going to start the timer all right and let's see whether just make sure that it goes through and it 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 uh, uh, demonstrates all the requirements that it needs to demonstrate right so obviously till now everything is working fine right the countdown continues and by the way if you feel you are already convinced that the code is going to work you don't need to uh, watch this two minute demo right you can skip fast forward or skip the video to two minutes ahead right if that's that's a feed totally feel free to do that you don't have to watch it but i think it might help just so just as an affirmation uh for some of you watching that's why i'm actually doing this live sort of test here and as a developer i always you know this just is just is just a good thing that i think most uh, good developers do is after they line after they write a few lines of code they like to see the effect of it they like to make sure that it is working and it is producing the changes the intended changes so this is anyways a good programming uh, coding practice so uh, hopefully you do that you know when you code yourself but again if you feel this is a bit much then you know feel free to skip the video uh, two minutes of the video and go to the next section uh, uh, go to go ahead all right so now here's the two things that i want you to take a note of right so obviously so far everything is working the countdown is going through fine also it's maintaining the our two digit minutes and two digit seconds now obviously seconds is still two digits so it's, it's showing it but look here we have zero zero here and we have two zeros here right and even the seconds when it goes down to below 10 it will it should show a two digit second meaning it should show a leading zero now here are the four things that you should look out for when the countdown reaches zero zero colon zero zero when that happens four things should happen this should change to break this should show one colon zero one colon zero zero meaning it should show the break length you should hear the beep and the countdown should continue so those are the four changes that you should see and if they happen that means our session to break transition is taking place accurately all right so in two more seconds let's go here we go all right hope you saw that we got all four changes successfully. We, we, we saw all four uh, expected changes, expected behavior, right? So this guy changed to break, this heading changed from session to break. Uh, we saw one zero one colon zero zero momentarily for one second, we heard the beep and the countdown continues, okay? Now, we are down to counting down the break. So here are the four changes you should look out for when the break countdown reaches zero, col zero, zero colon zero zero, okay? So basically here are the four changes you should see. The first thing you should see is that this word should change to session. Uh, you should see zero two colon zero zero here, meaning you should see the break, the session, excuse me, you should see the session length here as zero two colon zero zero. You should hear the beep and the countdown should continue, right? Those are the four changes you should see uh, when the break ends or when the break countdown ends and reaches zero zero. So here we go. All right, hopefully you caught that. And if you're not, you can go back and rewind the video and confirm that uh, just to recheck it. But yeah, all the four things happen. All the four expected behaviors happen. This string changed from break to session. We heard the beep. This showed zero to colon zero zero, which is the session length momentarily and the countdown continued. So guys, I think we can comfortably state that our changes are making the app work exactly as they're supposed to that the changes that we made in terms of using set timeout and also in terms of refactoring did not break the app all right so i'm going to reset it now we are going to basically go to our step number three which is we're going to make sure that our code is working and we're going to run our automated tests all right so i forgot to write the word test here so let me write it now all right so we're going to go to the free code camp website uh free code camp uh, workspace which is right here okay and I'm going to basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this uh, boilerplate code here. All right. And I'm going to start pasting the code that I need here. Right. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to copy my, um, my HTML. All right. And I'm going to bring it in here. 
put it here, go back here. I'm going to copy my CSS. Okay. And I will paste it here. And now you should see the clock show up. Okay. You should see the clock show up right here. Uh, let me quickly save it. Um, right, just to be sure. And let me finally get my um, JavaScript code here with the changes that we just made. Okay. So I'm going to copy it here. And I'm going to here. Right. And with that, I think we should be able to we should be able to see what's going on here we should be able to run the test so let me just uh let me just run the test here i just did another quick save just to be sure uh, and let me run the test and see what happens okay so you can see that the test is making the clock do things right it is uh sort of going through its motions and uh let's see uh what is the final result of the test, right? So it's down to, as you can see, is down to 22 tests, right? And if all tests pass, this button should change to green, and we should see the it should show 29 out of 29. Okay, and there you go. That's it, guys. As you can see, we have 29 out of 29 tests passing. So you know, once again. Hope you uh, feel good about that. All right, we used a different method uh, to implement the 25 plus five clock. It was a minor change, but it was a conceptually fairly significant change, right? Going from using set interval, right? To set timeout. So it's just a few lines of code, right? But again, conceptually, it's, 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 it was important to understand how to use set timeout recursively. So hope that helped. And we also did a whole bunch of refactoring. So our code looks really nice, right? It's much shorter, cleaner. We did all that. So we are good. And we finally ran the automated test and the automated tests are passing. You can see 29 out of 29. All right, so let's now go down to a final step here, which is a walkthrough of my GitHub repository. And I have uh, did not write GitHub here. So let me write it now. Uh, what I wanted to write was a walkthrough of GitHub repo or repository. So let's do that. So here is my GitHub repository uh, right here. Okay, so I have included a link uh, to my GitHub repository that contains all the artifacts related to this um, this video, this uh, this implementation of this app. And when you click on that link, it should bring you here, right? And here you will notice uh, all of these uh, uh, sort of artifacts here. So there's a you know README, which if you're familiar with GitHub, you know that's a sort of a standard um, uh, component of GitHub where uh, folks who are creating a project or a repository give instructions. So that's I have also I do have a readme.md file, and then I have the you know the various files here: the HTML file, the the styles or the CSS file, and also the uh, the JavaScript jQuery file here. And there's an assets folder here which you don't have to worry about. This is where I store all the pictures of the mockup and other uh, requirements related screenshots. So you can you can review it obviously, but uh, it's not really you know you, whatever i have in here is also in the readme so if you go down to readme you will notice at the bottom you have these screenshots for the requirements and also a mock-up for the app right now do read the readme f file uh, you know um, in detail i provide you know some important instructions here so for example especially this section here a note about icons used in the html file please do read this carefully so that you know what to do in case you're not using font awesome icons or you know what to do if you want to use font awesome icons just like i use right so that's it guys that's uh you know like i said a quick walkthrough of my github repository nothing you know nothing crazy happening here uh, fairly straightforward and that brings uh brings me to the end of this video guys so hope you hope you enjoyed it hope you liked it hope you found something or you know gained something from it if you did please do uh you know please do give me a like and uh, also subscribe to this channel and uh, and by all means you know leave me some comments right i'd love to hear from you you know how did the video go how did you feel about the video and the quality of it i would love to hear from it so i can improve my presentation and the way i sort of uh, uh, you know do these videos uh, so looking forward to your feedback and once again guys do give me a like and a subscribe and that's it guys so uh, thank you for watching and i hope to see you in my next video bye now